So probably one of the biggest things that I've noticed over the years that separates like top quality video production compared to beginner stuff is the use of composition or lack thereof. So in today's video, I wanted to share a few tips that are gonna help you optimize your videos to look better, to edit better, and to be usable for even more things than you might have thought of before. So thanks so much for joining. Now let's get into it. All right, so first one, and the reason why I think it is very, very valuable to have a camera that shoots 4K or higher, and why I'm about to upgrade finally, is to frame things a little bit wider than you actually want, and shoot in 4K or higher. That will enable you to use that shot as intended, also use that shot to crop it vertically a lot easier, or to different aspect ratios and stuff like that for the different social media platforms that people need to post this stuff on. So it's almost like instead of getting one shot that's usable, you're getting like three or four. I do the same thing for commercial photography. So framing a bit wider, shooting in a bit higher resolution is gonna make your shots count a lot more. <laughs> All right, this next one goes hand in hand with the first one. So for your gimbal movements where you're doing like a push in wide shot into any room. Uh, start these shots like three or four steps back from where you're wanting it to be. It's gonna make your shots a little bit smoother because you're gonna be already in the motion. So you're not gonna be like lunging forward at the starting point where you wanna cut that in the edit. Uh, so you're gonna have a longer fluid motion, more room to edit, it's always good. The second reason, you're gonna be able to cut that into a vertical shot as well, a lot easier and get a lot better vertical shot. These things are just gonna make your life a lot easier and give you a lot more options in post to make this stuff more usable and also give you the option to potentially upsell your product. So you could do a horizontal video and a vertical video. Really no reason not to and you're just gonna be thinking ahead and providing more value to your clients, so it's a win-win. And while we're talking about gimbal movements, I know I've said this plenty of times before, but doing similar movements throughout your shoots really, really makes editing simple. So my go-tos are pushing straight in, maybe with a little bit of a curve, left or right, panning, moving side to side pretty much perfectly, like a slider shot, or doing a parallax shot where you're kind of just orbiting around some type of detail object, or the front of the house, or really anything. One type of shot that nobody is really using is just static shots. Uh, don't be scared to use your tripod, guys. They use them in movies for a reason all the time. Especially if you're filming any type of thing with movement in real life, like water features or grass moving, trees blowing in the wind. Um, just a nice static shot can really do the job and give the viewer a little bit of space to relax while they're watching this. And it also adds a little bit of emphasis to your super cool gimbal movements. So don't be afraid to use a tripod style shot from time to time. All right, this next one is probably one of the most overlooked things that I typically see in real estate videos that really creates a big gap between super high pro look to beginner look. And that is using your compositions to incorporate text and actually make room for the text instead of just kind of winging it as an afterthought. Honestly, when you're starting to do this, the shots might feel and look a little bit weird at first, but you're gonna start seeing these types of compositions in your head and looking for them instinctively moving forward. Don't be afraid to put something like right in the center. I know this is hardly ever used for real estate stuff especially, but when you're watching a video, if there's something important that's text, uh, titles work really well. But just a little bit of thought is gonna go a long, long way with these. So how do you do this while you're shooting? So I like to use the grid preview on my camera screen to where I can kind of see where I'm gonna want these to be um, in frame. 
but I'm sure you're already doing that. And also sometimes it works really well to put like an object that's a solid color or some negative space. So like emptiness or like a sky uh, right where you want the text to be. Because making videos is really all about the end viewer and how effective this is in telling a story, showing the narrative, and just overall creating visuals that enhance that and make the story better, make it a fun experience to watch and make it, you know, pretty show some stuff that people don't normally notice one extra tip for graphics um, if it's really hard to read so like let's say you have a really bright shot one thing you can always do is lower your opacity to like 80 percent or something and that will knock down the highlights enough to where white text which i typically recommend is just going to show up a lot easier and it's going to be a lot easier to read and you can still see the shot so it's not messing anything up if you've got text spanning over like three or four shots so maybe like a list or something i'll just typically put like a solid black layer over it and have that at a low opacity so like 20 percent. so it's kind of just the reverse effect but either way if it's not readable it's kind of pointless all right the last tip is super simple uh do longer takes i know i've said stuff about doing short takes before but i found that Moving into people doing more content, more social media, more people want more posts these days, including me, and everything moving to be more video centric, um, doing longer takes is super, super beneficial. So typically, you know, you do a shoot, send out your whole edit that shows the whole property or whatever. But now being able to have multi purpose footage to where you can do different types of edits is super, super valuable. So for longer takes, uh, if you're able to pull it off, you could basically turn any shot, especially wide shots, into a whole Instagram post or a whole Instagram reel. Especially if you're shooting in like 60 frames a second, it's really, really easy to slow that down on a timeline into like a 20, 30 second post. Boom, there's your easy upsell. If you're doing this for yourself, there's an idea to get into the whole Instagram reels and TikTok a game. Just do simple stuff that's easy to watch. And it's gonna be good. Maybe you just add a little bit of sound design or some music to it and some text or voiceover and call it a day. Super simple 30 second video concept. Anyway, so the moral of the story is do things that are a little bit more thoughtful, a little bit more multi-use, a little bit more multi-platform friendly and it's gonna make your editing process easier. It's gonna give you more deliverables that you can possibly uh, give to your clients that you might not have thought of before. And yeah, that's about it. If you're new, thanks so much for joining the channel. If you're old, thanks so much for being here again and the continued support. You guys are awesome and I really, really appreciate y'all. And as always, I look forward to seeing y'all in the next one. Peace.